We are live. So let's just wait for a couple of people to jump in and see how we get on. This is the, the first time I've ever used StreamYard as well. All right. It's it's pretty good. We, we've really enjoyed it and really easy to use. Um, yeah. The, the good thing is it, it goes to Facebook, it goes to YouTube as well. I think there's an update you can get on that goes on to Insta as well, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which are the two that we use, uh, mainly Facebook and Instagram. So yeah. it's pretty pretty good. Um, and let's see, you can do all the backgrounds and stuff. Um, right. Okay, we've got a comment already from Alistair. I was just texting Alistair. Um, evening, how are you? Uh, thanks for, for joining us. Um, so, guys, we are here. You are not seeing double. Uh, we are two <laughs> separate people. <laughs> so uh, we're joined tonight. Yeah, you've got more hair on top than I do, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we're joined tonight by uh, Neil from the, the, I assume the founder, um, creator of the Whiskey Trials, which um, is a YouTube channel, uh, vlogger, blogger, uh, and a wee bit of um, a website selling merchandise as well. Uh, we're waiting on Russell to come along. He was in the shop today till six o'clock, probably got stuck behind a tractor. For any of you who know the Aberdeenshire roads, will know that um, if you if you are driving through the Shire, um, you, you, know, you, you, you will be held up. Um, if there's a tractor or, God forbid, a horse and cart or something like that on the way. And, um, hopefully he, he'll be joining with us very shortly. Uh, good evening, Duncan. I hope you're well. Sorry we couldn't sort you out with the Glenallachy this morning. Um, it was it was unreal. Uh, one of the stories of the week, you know, this Glenallachy 30-year-old launch. Uh, yeah, gone within minutes, uh, as, as they tend to do nowadays, unfortunately. We did think maybe we would have slowed it down with it you know near 500 pound asking price and uh no th th those guys are quick off the the uh, mark with with that uh and of course the kind of the understudy to that the, the one that went under radar a wee bit was the new 18 year old uh which came out yeah, it took a little bit longer to sell um but yeah eventually by the end of the day we we'd got you know, sold all our allocation on that as well um so you know those guys are doing something pretty special so it's not a big surprise uh, so uh, yeah, my, my dram tonight is actually a Glen Allocky, the 13 year old, um, but from an independent, rather new independent bottler, the Uncharted Whiskey Company. So there you go, guys, shameless plug for you. Um, a 13 year old, fully matured Oloroso cask, uh, 50%. So it's being, I, I understand it's being cut, um, but uh, really enjoyable. Um, it's not as intense as some of the, the cask bottlings from Glen Allocky, but a uh, really nice. Uh, full on other also dram there, so that's in my glass. What about your glass, Neil? Uh, it's it's pretty uh, standard supermarket stuff. And in one of my videos, I believe I said it's six ball hairs away from being good. <laughs> and it's the the Aberlour twelve. It's yeah, because the uh, they were looking at discontinued as far as I believe the ten year old, and that was going to be the new. The new kind of entry level, but we still see ten year old. I mean, yeah, there must be a yeah, a still lot see of it. it going about. So, and the, you know, the the thing is that it's like it's nice enough. It's kind of standard. Um, it's a good sipper. I think I picked it up uh, twenty nine quid. Yeah. So for a twelve year old, it's not too bad if you catch it on a deal like that. But yeah, yeah. I just you wish, could... I just wish that they like embraced the. The kind of whiskey culture, you know, that that trying to do it right, you know, like the likes of Aaron um, and others do. I was going to say Glendronic there, but you know they're <laughs> changing their ways. But they've anyway. been there. Um, I think we'll we'll hold out on the old Glendronic because uh, you know none of the, the the new liquid, the the altered whatever they're going to do um, is out yet. So I, I've been an advocate. Russ, I'm just going to let Russell in. He has joined us. Um, that I, I'm not going to pass judgment until we see it. Hi, Russell. How are you? Good, good. Yeah. Good, good. That's what I, that's what I should have done. Actually, I should have gone. Hello and welcome <laughs> to Inverary Whiskey Shop, the Blather. Anyone who doesn't know my uh, YouTube channel knows that quite often I start my videos in such a fashion. Yes. I, I feel I feel kind of left out now. I didn't. 
they didn't get a hello. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we've got Mark and uh, Gerard uh, on, so we'll say a hello oh, yeah, to Gerard and Mark. Um, so, yeah, Russell, uh, nice of you to join us. Um, just, just like opening the shop, you're always a wee bit latchy. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Literally, literally, the, the car engine's still ticking. It's kind of, yeah. <laughs> Did you get stuck behind a tractor? No, not at all. I got, I got a good run home actually, but it's um, it's sometimes a little bit longer than you think when you're in a bit of a hurry. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. so uh, have you managed to pour yourself a, a wee man? I've poured myself a wee man. I'm on the uh, a dancing manny tonight. Um, oh yeah, awesome. And I've actually got. Steel. You're on it as well. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the uh, the Glen Allocky, but just in case the chat is good, I've got a wee dancing man beside me as well. Uh, so Vic Cameron has just joined us. Good evening, Vic. How are you? Um, so, so yeah. You um, on, what was what that? You um, I, I was saying I'll probably get to in a, in a point. I've, I've gone very supermarket. Um, okay. And. As I was saying to Mike and the rest of the guys that are in the chat, it's uh, it, I described it in one of my videos as being six ball hairs um, from being good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the 12. Yeah, okay. So, you know, because it's the, the 40 percent, or if it was just that 6 percent more, I think it would just give it that, that little oomph that it would be required to actually make me think that it's good. Yeah. You don't get many supermarket brands that go over the 40 though do you maybe a 43 now and then but i suppose it depends where you shop because i've noticed yeah. different supermarkets stock different stuff so for instance the co-op that i have is different from the co-op that kind of russell goes to and the co-op yeah. here the only one that's above 40 percent would be the uh the brew the uh the original the, the the, classic, the, yeah. yeah the classic and you know, it's 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 all right. I bought a bottle of it. It's never on a deal. It's always the same price. It's always kind of expensive. And I was like, <laughs> mm, you know, for the it, yeah, it's fifty percent, but it didn't like blow me away. It wasn't like, wow, I want to go away and try every Brewerclady under the sun. But I've had other Brewerclades that are, you know, absolutely amazing. Yeah, I just got to say we've we've got a comment here from Whiskey Lover Society uh, on YouTube, which I believe is our first ever. YouTube comment that we've had and all the blethers we've done. Oh, well, so. There you go. <laughs> we'll the YouTube massive. Cheers to that. <laughs> cheers to that. So cheers to Whiskey Lover Society. There we go. Get a YouTuber on to attract the uh, the YouTubers. Mm -hmm. So I, I, kind of, I kind of interrupted your your chat there. I heard a little bit about it here, and probably we'll get back to the Glen Glen Dronach at some point. But talking about the supermarket and um, the drams, you know your. Typical ones you can pick up in a cool. That was really where you started um, the whiskey trials. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I think I've kind of gone back to my roots a little bit recently because mm -hmm. uh, the sort of past couple of videos. Well, so, well, the, one of the last ones was um, uh, the uh, Singleton uh, Malt Masters. And do you know what? I really enjoyed it. I, I went through this phase, and I think everybody goes through these phases uh, when they're on this whiskey journey. I was spending loads on whiskey. I was really building up my collection because I, I only had, I mean, when I first started Whiskey Travels, I had no whiskey. It was just bottle to bottle. And I'd just talk rubbish about it. You know, I didn't really know what I was talking about. The only saving grace with me, and I still think this is true, but I don't really know that much about whiskey um, in general, not, not compared to you two guys. Um, but, you know, I've got a really good sense of smell and a really good sense of taste. So, those kind of just stand me in good stead for the for the reviews, I think, and I can come out with some interesting tasting notes, which is always fun. Um, but yeah, I, I really kind of started without too much direction, any kind of goal, just liked whiskey and was starting to get passionate about it. Um, and then, then it changed. Then I got really passionate about it. And then I went through this phase of just buying everything and it got to that stage Russell, you, you you can probably relate to this. Is, is that is the kind of FOMO, that fear of missing out? You're like, oh, I need this bottle, and I need this bottle, and then you get all this chat. Your world becomes whiskey. Like, I scroll through Facebook, I scroll through Instagram. I'm, I'm obviously, I've got a YouTube channel, so I'm getting comments about whiskey. People asking me about it and all the rest of it. So you just your whole world becomes whiskey, and you're like, oh, you had the Kilcarran eight, and I'm like, oh, I need to go buy the Kilcarran eight. Oh, oh Glen Alkey, come out with a new one. I need to go buy that. So I'm spending so much on whiskey. And my, my collection grew from absolutely nothing 
to probably over 100 bottles where 90 plus percent of them were opened. Um, it got to a stage though where I was just like, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna tighten the belt and I'm just gonna drink what I've got. And I'm now at that stage where I've pretty much gone through what I'd collected. Um, I've got a few bottles that I'm keeping, obviously. Um, see my collector's video for you know what kind of collector I am. <laughs> but it's like, I, I, so I've kept I've kept them. I don't have that many actually. There, there really isn't that many. Maybe like. I want to say between 10 and 15 bottles, I'm just kind of keeping there as a, a, a little nest egg. I still might drink them, I don't know. Um, but now I've kind of returned from this FOMO, like massive whiskey, give me that taste, give me that Edredour, give me, you know, give me all that big, massive flavor, cask strength to, I've, I've, I've literally come full circle to like, do you know what? That Singleton Malt Masters, the very light uh, floral note that just goes all the way through from nose to palate to aftertaste. I'm like, lovely, perfect, yeah. you know? So I've really come this kind of full journey. I'm sure I'll get back in to like the big whiskey hitters, as it were, the Glen Allocies, Glen Dronics, and all the rest of it. But, you know, it's, it's, it's so expensive. It's getting more and more expensive to like keep yeah. up. And I, talking, I kinda, talking of the expensive stuff, yeah, uh, and that's, that's what I think society. Society. yeah, it's it, one of the things as a YouTuber. I mean, it's it's probably uh, I, well, I don't know it, your situation, Mike, uh, in terms of like how much of the stock you're able to try, but when people you know people <laughs> expect you to know, right? If I come into your whiskey shop, I expect you to know about that whiskey. Like if I'm if I'm asking about the Glen Alkey Thirty, I'm like, is it worth that five hundred quid? Is it worth that money? Should I pay for it? The, you know? the thing we, is, Neil, we, we, by, by, yeah, we don't get to taste it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Neil, by the time you ask that question, it's gone. It's already so, gone. So yeah. you don't ask, but, you just... but you know what I mean? I'm going to come into your yeah. shop and there's going to be yeah, whiskey yeah. on the shelf. I'm going to be like, what's that like? What's this like? What's that like? And it's yeah. kind of it's kind of the same with a, a YouTube channel in terms of I feel, I feel a, a bit of pressure sometimes to always review a bottle um uh and, and kind of analyze it and I, I sometimes i just get a bit sick of it sometimes i just want to enjoy the whiskey and just be like i'm just going to drink this bottle i don't need to think about a review i don't need to over analyze it anything like that you know yeah i, th I think we we just gone through a, a very similar period where we were doing tastings virtual tastings and we um we looked at you know russell and i were doing three four tastings a weekend or a week um and it got each. to the point where yeah yeah each <laughs> Um, and it got to the point where, you know, you're having a taste of them all. Uh, when it came to relaxing afterwards, you're like, you know what, I just can't get whiskey. Uh, and mm -hmm. it, when it got to that stage where you weren't enjoying it, that, that's when you have to kind of take stock and think, you know, why, why am I not enjoying it? I just think we were both kind of burnt out with it. But let's step back. Let's not do every and even you know do the tastings, but not drink them or taste them every time. Um, well, I was finding I was, I was pouring the drums and just nosing them and then popping them back mm -hmm. into my, my sample bottle and just putting them away. You know, just so you, you weren't actually drinking, you were taking part by, you know, nosing and getting the notes and all that kind of part. But the actual drinking part, you thought, I can't physically do this. Yeah. Um, but it's difficult because you want to be part of the, you want to be part of the night as well. So um, I, I think you guys these guys that tour the world do not all the time. The wrong job. Job. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy drinking every night. I can do this. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, the, you know, the, the, the point was, you know, is that when you're doing it every night for a job, yeah, you know, if I was to say, um, sit down, watch a film with a wife, and I pour myself a wee whiskey joint, she's like, "Oh, you're drinking again." You're like, "Well, this is my downtime. This is my relaxing time." You know, this yeah. I'm not I'm not studying this job. I want to just pour it and enjoy it and drink it. And, and there is that kind of blur. It got to a point where there's blurred lines there, and you're like, "Right, let, let's let's foot off the gas." Yeah. Um, and, and, and you know, we're we're talking about really great drinking drams. You know, Russell, you're on and this that, one. And that's like, coming. That's coming back down. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Tw think 23 is... quid for that, um, and it's an absolutely belter. 40%. Um, chill filtered? Yeah. Probably. Bad dram? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's what Charlie McLean, it's what Charlie McLean drams with. You know, that's that's his dram and dram is in Adelphi. Um, so if it's good enough for Charlie, it's good enough for us, I think. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, think... you, make, you make an interesting point, just to kind of go back to your point about going full circle. But mm -hmm. in a similar vein, I remember once when I used to be a fairly serious cyclist, and every single ride I went out on, I mean, if, if 
if I didn't get the right time, if my heart rate wasn't properly, if I didn't do the proper zones, I just was stressed out about it. It was like it was almost a waste of a ride. And mm-hmm. I thought, this is rubbish. I'm, I should be going out and enjoying cycling. And I just stopped all that. I got rid of the computer. I got rid of all that. And I just went out. And if I felt like riding fast, I rode fast. If I felt like riding slow, I rode slow. And it didn't matter anymore. And I think there's something about that with the whiskey that you you go for that FOMO, as you say. But it's like <laughs> lots of other great drums out there. So let's just enjoy them. You know, let's not worry. Let's not get stressed about not getting the, um, you know, the, the exclusive, you know. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think it's important that, you know, you, you don't, because you can get down a, a rabbit hole of chasing the drama and, you know, spending far too much money. I, I suppose it's almost like gambling. Uh, when, when you're spending too much and you're doing that addictive kind of, uh, and like I say, that the Glenallachy today, for example, sold out minutes. Yeah, mm. absolutely crazy. And we didn't even advertise it. You know, that was... I, th- that's I, think, I think that's the thing as well for like for true aficionados that really appreciate that smell and taste and go on these little journeys and i think you know anybody that's seen my kind of youtube channel knows that i'm kind of like that and i i, I hope that the, the people who have subscribed to me are kind of like that as well i mean i've had um well for instance russell has sent me a, a story and we worked on a poem together as well mm-hmm. about about whiskey you know it's that kind of uh, that feeling, the, the the thing that good whiskey invokes within you, that creativity and stuff, you know, it's more than just a drink. It's more than just getting drunk. It's more than just, you know, yeah. slamming back a, a few whiskeys. And um, to come back to my full circle thing again, uh, I, I think I'll quickly um, get back into the, the sort of really good stuff because what I'm finding is, for instance, this, Aberlour 12 is doing not much for me in terms of the smell, the taste, feeling a journey, you know, being inspired. It, yeah. it doesn't inspire me. I'm just drinking it because I like I like whiskey and I like to, you know, obviously I like that whiskey buzz that you get as well. But it gets to that point where you're like, mm, wait a minute, am I just drinking whiskey essentially to get that feeling to, you know, get drunk or get tipsy, whatever. Or am I drinking whiskey because I really appreciate it? I want to spend time with that dram, and and really get into it. And I think that's the only thing I'm going to say about like supermarket whiskeys is that once you get past that, once you are become like that true aficionado, and you really start to appreciate uh, different whiskeys that aren't in the supermarkets that might be cast strength, that you know are very oily or big tasting, you know very different, varied, all the rest of it it's it, it's kind of that's where that's where that kind of point lies where you can say uh i'm i'm drinking this because it's some kind of work of art almost it's it's, yeah. it's the precision of it being made it's, it's it's in its truest form i i can sit like for instance like i know the the glendronic 18 i think the 2017 uh bottling was probably my favorite and i remember sitting in my lying in my bed and i was trying to write um some poetry about it and i'm rubbish at poetry unless i, I can I, get a I bit of a start. but it's it so i was i was sitting there and I, and I ended up just putting down the notepad and forgetting about that and i i sat with because i was kind of lying down in my bed i sat with it just under my nose and i i spent a good 20 minutes just smelling the glendronach 18. Yeah. And that's the kind of whiskey you should be drinking, right? If you can afford it, that is. I mean, I think everybody, there's a place for supermarket whiskeys, but getting past that point, then it becomes this kind of passion. And it's like you move into a different realm, but equally you have to be careful because I've gone through that whole realm. I've spent like an absolute shit ton of money on whiskey like thousands of pounds to get to this stage where I'm now back at the beginning and I'm like reining in the horns and I'm, I'm finding this balance between why am I drinking this? Is this yes. what I want to drink? Because right now I'd rather be in your shoes than drinking an Aberlour or 12. However, I do have an Arbeg 10, which would probably pe- pep me up a little bit, but you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and yeah. as you say, Neil, I think when you have that dram that you can nurture and enjoy, it's, it's, you know, as a shop, uh, and we, 
we can kind of advocate the the whiskey ambassador uh, course as well, which is uh, a kind of course for the on trade. But it's all about drink better, drink smarter, um, and drink less. So if you've got a good dram that you can yep. smell for half an hour, and for me, the, the kind of dream dram is one that you get as much enjoyment smelling as you do tasting, as you do nurturing the flavor afterwards. You know, so that mm-hmm. could be one large dram, or one dram could take you half an hour, whereas something like your, your supermarket, your 40% or whatever it is, you know, yep. it's gone too quickly. You know. And a large part of that is because the, the finish is gone because it doesn't have the oiliness that you're, that you're chasing it. Yeah, yeah, you're chasing yeah. it. Um, yeah. I like Sam. Uh, Sam, Sam, Sam England's made a, a fantastic. I mean, Sam's one of our uh, regulars um, and great fun on a on a tasting. We had a great night with him on the, on Saturday at Douglas Lang. Um, but he's saying, yeah, 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 you know you spend too much when the DPD driver knows you and chats whiskey. <laughs> but not only that, Sam also said, also asks after your children. So, <laughs> well, well, so what the kids do? <laughs> That's when you know you spend too much of whiskey. He knows all about you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, he, you know, we, we've spoke about it being a gamble as well. And, you know, with the amount of bottles that are coming out, people are chasing. It is a gamble because by the time you think about it, it's gone. You need to, you know, and you've no idea mm-hmm. what the liquid tastes like. You don't have time to, to go on to the whiskey trials or Ralphie or whatever it is that you follow. Yeah, you, know, you don't have time because it's gone. <laughs> and by the time they all come out, you realise it's a stunning dram. You have to go to the auction. And... But this is but the, but the 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 counter of that is that you know going to somebody or or watching somebody like Ralphie or myself or. Uh, you know, new dram drinker or whoever it might be. All these, I mean, there is so many whiskey tubers right now. It is unbelievable. When I, I think, I've, so I've been going like I was trying to think of this. I think I've been doing this for like three years now. Um, yeah, yeah. So like three years, eight hundred and fifty odd subscribers. Right. So it's a hard slog with the old mm-hmm. whiskey tube to to build up that kind of fan base, as it were. Um. You know, but the whole the whole point in people going to people like myself and, and finding something about uh, Glen Allochy, for instance, it means that they can make a more informed choice. So if I say that I've had 10 Glen Allochy cast strength whiskies and nine out of 10 of them have been fantastic, it means that the next one that comes out, they have confidence in going for it if they trust me yeah. as somebody that can taste whiskey properly. And what, what's your kind of mantra of picking a dram to review how do you go around about because it's not always it's not going to be always a new dram is it it could be something like the average Aber- 12 or something how, how do yeah. you pick one is it- it's been a very confused mantra over the years i <laughs> have to say i think uh, there has been no process to it uh, really i think it, it, it started off with the kind of supermarket stuff stuff that i could afford stuff that was uh, easily available and then it went from that to more exclusive stuff um, because that's where I was on my journey. So I think it's just where I was on my journey really is the answer to that. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's, there was no kind of like definite uh, reason or rhyme to it. Um, I've got, I've still got like 20 bottles say with like a tiny little bit in it. Um, I, I've got, I've, I, I, for instance, I think one of the oldest ones, I've got an old Pulteney 17. I've been meaning to review it for ages. Okay, and I've got this tiny little bit left in it, and obviously it's discontinued. I do have a full bottle of it, but but who cares? Does anybody care about Old Pulteney Seventeen right now? Yeah, I, mean, really, who knows? I think I think it's about what you do. I mean, you're right. I think I think you're right. I mean, having followed you, I mean, and they now now been related to you. Um, the 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 journey for me, whenever you do a, a new video, it's always a you don't know where you're going, and I think I like that. I guess there's some YouTubers you're expecting it to be the next Daft Mill, the next. Bad and working, whatever. They're, they're, you know, all that kind of new stuff's coming up. Wait, wait, the, wait. The, You've seen a YouTuber open a daft mill. <laughs> Where was this? <laughs> Damn. Show me the well, link. Be, be talking about that. There's a few different things that you do, and and you know, to kind of kind of keep some structure to it. But the story in a glass is a great diversion, and you know, you're really looking, guys. If you if you anybody's here got a short story about a, a drama they've enjoyed or that kind of thing, Neil will be very interested to kind of to hear it yeah. and to and to kind of read it out on his channel. Absolutely. Um, I love a but, story in a glass. So that's that's. It's, but you also it, did you also did the bottle share as well, which um, uh-huh. you know you've done two of them now. Yeah, I gave away most of my Glendronach twenty-seven-year-old. 
Yeah. And I gave away pretty much all of my Glen Cadam. Well, it wasn't really mine. I got it gifted by the. I actually bought the the Glendronic uh, twenty seven, yeah. and I gifted most of that, over half the bottle, to to people that had subscribed and took part in my live event. Yeah. And then, yeah, the Glen Cadam twenty five, which uh, seemed to go down pretty well with everybody. But I think that that's one of the things that uh, I think characterizes my YouTube channel. And I hope it, I hope it's something that makes me stand out uh, in comparison to other people, other YouTubers, um, is that I've, I've kind of, I've tested the waters. I've done different variations of, of things. Like I've got so many playlists on my on my page on YouTube. And uh, the, uh, the story in a glass is definitely one of my favorites. It gets, get this though, it gets the least amount of views but it is my personal favorite. Um, and it's it's purely just because it, like like I was talking about before, it really epitomizes uh, what whiskey really means to an aficionado, what, what, it, what it can bring out, that creativity, the memories it induces, all that kind of stuff rolled up. It's just, I, I've never encountered anything else in my life that would, uh, would, give me that kind of creativity or uh, make me think about those kind of things. Uh, and, and that's why I love A Story in a Glass. Um, and I love that other people love it. And it, it's, it doesn't get that many views compared to some of the other videos. Um, but I think the views that it does get mean more. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, yeah. um, uh, it's like tribe building. So obviously I'm a, 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 a web developer, agency owner, marketer, so I, I know a little, a couple of little things about marketing and tribe building and, and all that kind of stuff. Not that I've necessarily applied it that well with the whiskey trials. So don't, <laughs> don't, you, don't take that as an example. Um, but you know, the, the, the thing about a story in a glass is that out of all my kind of playlists is that's the, that's the thing that could build a really passionate tribe um, mm -hmm. because there's there's that there's that shared um commonality and that's what you need in a in a kind of tribe and that that, that shared goal could be to maybe get something published in in the long term like a bunch of people's stories and poems and drawings and and all the rest of it so Actually, when we when we interviewed uh, russell uh for the shop uh, it was his story in a glass that he read so we, we'd asked for a a pitch to talk about something you're passionate about for yeah, I remember a minute or two minutes. Um, I, and Russell took out a story in a glass, so it was you know that you know, it was it, what, what it got what, us what, to think this guy loves whiskey and he, he really enjoys whiskey, so, so yeah, he's that's, the right man for the job. That's like the clincher, um, isn't it? So, what, yeah. what was the story? Was it the Ardbeg story, uh, Russell? No, it was a, it was a tomato, yeah. yeah. Oh, the Verdejo gas, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, good one. But the Arbeg yeah. was the first one we kind of developed. And, you know, again, guys listening in, if you're thinking, oh, I, I'm not very good at writing and stuff, the reason we ended up doing this, Neil is good at writing. But we, we actually had had a night uh, in the in the house where I was staying, drinking our bag, and we just started going through things like, gosh, get, I'm getting tomatoes, I'm getting tomato plants here. And, you know, you're getting the old fish smell and there's the kind of tarry rope. Yeah. We, just, we just started talking about this old guy out sailing in a really stormy night, just coming back and, you know, getting on shore, he had a few kind of mackerel in his leather bag and his hands were all kind of worn and gnarly and, the, you know, the kind of smell of the sea, the smell of the harbour, just getting out, the smell of the wood off the boat, the rope, and then going into his greenhouse to water his plants before he went in with his pipe. Yeah. And just all that kind of different smell. And you just, you just immediately think of all these smells. And Neil put it into a fantastic story. Uh, it was just, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll, just I'll, the scene. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the prelude to the story being written. Obviously that was one of the preludes, but that, so that had been rolling about in my head for a while. I think this is, this is one of the great things about like sort of whiskey that, and, and a passion, any kind of passion that inspires kind of creativity, right? Um, it can't be a bad thing. Uh, but I remember I'd, I'd fallen asleep and then I woke up, it was two o'clock in the morning and I was like, ding. And then this story, the beginnings of it, what, you know, the kind of rough conversation that uh, Russell and I had had about it was just rolling about in my head, rolling about in my head. I was like, and then it started to just form. I, I was like, oh, 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 I need to get up. So I got up <laughs> two o'clock in the morning, went through the living room, grabbed the notepad and pen and just wrote it out. I wrote it out and I was like, 
yep, pretty good. I left it. Next day, I just kind of revised it a little bit, but that was it. It just spewed out of my head at two o'clock in the morning. Mm. And um, I, I love that. I think I think that's I think that probably is my favorite story um, out of all of them. It was the first one, so. Yeah, gonna set a set a benchmark there for for yourself to match. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but I think I think the ones that have followed have been great because obviously I've had one from Russell and then I had one from Luna, uh, and then I wrote one about uh, Glenn Dronach as well, um, about the fairground, our first fairground. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and uh, then the uh, I, have we done the poem? I don't think we've have, the the sort of poem that you wrote and then I kind of tweaked it and then. I don't think we've done that one yet, have we? We haven't done it yet. No, that was the one about really? the... And again, it's just this kind of thing when you're out and about. <clears throat> that poem came from just going to a walk when the... Sorry, I've got a peanut stuck in my throat. <clears throat> when, the, when the combines were taking in the um, the barley. Wait, and that, that smell it? of you know sort of barley in the air and the, the, the roar of the combine. And Let's see if I can find it. Talk, talk amongst yourselves. I'll see if I can find <laughs> it. And I'll, I'll read it out if I can find it. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, uh, yeah, as, as we mentioned, if, if you're sitting there on a s sipping a glass or, or smelling a glass, um, show, share us what you're drinking, share us your thoughts. We'll maybe get a wee story um, in the next kind of 20, 25 minutes that you, you're here with us. <laughs> there, there's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah? Absolutely. <laughs> Take yeah. 25 minutes to create a story. And, and Sam, no, we're not, we're not going to talk about Oakwell. Um, that's, that's not happening. No. Here is that was, a, that was a story from last Friday, Mike. I'll tell you something. Okay. But yeah, honestly, what, what, what happens in the taste and stays in the taste and remember. <laughs> right. Okay. So it's uh, it's this one, right? It's harvest time for the farm and the dram, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that the right one, Russell? I think so. Okay. Let me read this out. Hopefully I can do it justice. Blue skies, brilliant sun, barley harvest, golden brown. Plucked from fields in northeast shire, straw for beasts, beautifully round, grain for the dram, distillery bound. High in the air, the buzzards soaring, while down on the ground, the combines roaring. A meow and a cheep as the swallow joins in, swooping and diving and full of life. Long journey travelled to spend summer with us. Doors off the tractor, heat all around, trips to the yard as the sun goes down. The distant roar of the combine and the smell of husk in the air. Is there a better place to be than Scotland at the Hearst? It's good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's important to remember that the poems don't have to rhyme. It's yeah, it's story in verse, isn't it? It's yeah. I mean, there's um, there's a couple of rhyming bits in there, uh, but yeah. it, it's the it's it's just the feeling and the. The, the imagery that it, it yeah, yeah it takes you on a journey uh, and i think that's the whole story is it the whole point of the story is to take yeah, the journey absolutely. um whiskey lovers society mentioned that is it's whiskey i i think i truly believe that whiskey is the only drink in the world that will take you back in time uh, and yeah, in, in a story or, or take you to places you've never been before you know if you mm -hmm. smell orange in a gin it's because there's probably orange in the gin <laughs> yeah, smell it in a whiskey why is it the cask is it the the fermentation yeah. what part of the journey that whiskey brought that flavor to it yeah and then you think what have you done in that time you know we, we've had people in the tastings in tears thinking about where they've been through um yeah. who, who they've lost or who's been born or whatever you know Champions League, League Cup finals and things like that. You know, all this kind of stuff has happened while they, this whiskey's been in a cask, um, and it is really quite poignant. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think I, we've, as a, as a community, we've lo we've missed that physical kind of sitting in a bar. Uh, thank God we, we can go down to the bar now, but uh, you'll 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 never see two people having an argument over a vodka and coke. Um, not an argument, a discussion. Uh, <laughs> a debate. A debate, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, whiskey, it divides people, but it brings them together in the same, uh, so, you know, it's the same kind of thing. It's, there's always that mutual respect. I don't like Ardbeg. I, I'm not saying personally, this is the guy at the bar. I don't like Ardbeg, but, you know, tell me why you, you like it. Uh, yeah. You could talk about what it brings to you. You know, like, you know you've got to respect that. You can't just say it. You're talking crap. Drinking yeah. Aberlour, drinking Glenallachie. That's the good stuff. So let's 
yeah but it's good I mean, for news it is one of those things uh, it's it is one of those it can be like a scottish thing i think for the uh, you know that we're kind of passionate about our own drink but it is completely worldwide now and i'm sure like if you went to mexico they'd be passionate about tequila but tequila in that respect hasn't grown worldwide where you've got these passionate aficionados about tequila right so i think that's where uh, you know scotch especially is is different it's got this worldwide appeal where people are just like wow i mean I, I mean, don't get me wrong. The other spirits are amazing as well, but I've seen um, multiple, multiple people that have been well into their bourbons and Americans into their bourbons, like really passionate about their bourbons, try scotch and then go on this massive scotch journey and just pretty much never go back to bourbon anymore. They're just like, why would I? And I, I, I kind of get that. I've never really quite got into bourbon. Any of you guys like bourbon? I, I don't really drink much bourbon. I just don't yeah, get time for um, it. I'm not saying I wouldn't like it, but... It's... I wouldn't be able to tell you a good bourbon. Um, a, a, a good bourbon, you know. We, we, we have a few. I like Michter's. Um, I quite like a Maker's Mark. I use Maker's Mark for making a cocktail um, mm -hmm. with a bourbon-based. Maker's is my go-to for that. Um, I've used Jim Beam cocktails. That, uh, I, I, mean, yeah. I think if I was to drink a, a bourbon, I'd probably go for one that I know that some of my favourite master blenders like to use for maturing whiskey. See, you know, if, that's, that's if you probably what would me in that direction, but, but that would be the only reason why. I, I have no idea what, what bourbon yeah. I might like. It's the same as whiskey, though, right? I mean, the, the people that are well into their bourbons are going to be like, probably, if there's anybody in the, in the comments here, they're going to be typing in rapidly, like, bourbon's amazing, and all you need to try is this. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like um, you know, Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels must come out with some amazing stuff. I'm sure they do. It's probably quite expensive, the kind of cask exclusive, whatever stuff that they come out with. Um, but the, the stuff that I've had, even Maker's Mark, it's probably my favorite one that I've had thus far. Although I will say that I, I, I drank it a little bit too quick because it was quite sweet yeah. and it did make me a little bit ill. Um, and it, it's one of those drinks, you know, when you're like, I don't know if anybody else is like this, but like I can drink cast strength whiskey, like 60% whiskey, no problem, don't need water, can really, I can still appreciate it. And it doesn't like get me like knocking off the walls or anything. Um, but for some reason, bourbon is different. It, it doesn't need to be as strong. And I don't think I'm drinking it necessarily faster, but it has a different effect on me. It, yeah. it, it, maybe the and, sweetness and, or the sugar level or something like that. Yeah, it might be the sugar as well. It just kind of peaks it. But that's the only thing I'd say about the bourbons that I've had is that uh, they feel a little bit one-dimensional in the sweetness. It's like, oh, there's vanilla again, and <laughs> I've got that sweetness, and it's like that's it, you know. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny you mentioned about the whole the whole Scottishness of, of Scotch and and you know that kind of passion that we have, and it's a worldwide passion. Um, and there's lots of people on here who would say they're basically Scottish because of Scotch. But it's one of those few times in our lives as Scotsmen that to rephrase a saying from a movie is, it's not shite being Scottish. It's actually, <laughs> one, of, it's actually one of the best times to be Scottish. It's when anybody wants to talk about whiskey, you're like, yeah, I'm Scottish. Oh, yeah. God, man, you make the guest. Yeah, yeah. So, this is one of the best times to be Scottish. We're well, the top yeah. of the top, the king of the fucking world. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, and Duncan has popped on there. Yeah, it's a great conversation starter. And yeah. if, when we get back to traveling, and we're, we're you know, I, I, I did a bit of solo traveling um, when I was younger around Europe. And you, know, you walk into a bar, if you didn't know anyone, order a scotch. People will, oh, all right, okay, so what you drink it? And you know, I had strangers speaking to me in Spanish asking about, about whiskey and why I didn't put ice in it. Because in Spain, you know, ice in your whiskey is quite, almost a must because it's so hot. You need to chill it down to get it refreshing. And uh, I was like, no. <laughs> it yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that was a conversation starter. It's why you why are you not having ice or why you know, why are you having it neat? Is it that's how I drink? And then they realize you're Scottish and it, it opened it opens doors to you drinking drinking whiskey, especially when you're abroad. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, you always kind of get that though as a, a Scottish person I think going abroad they're like ah oh you're a you're a bloody drinker come on we'll get you a couple of brews in come on yeah. let's go and it's like <laughs> it becomes this kind of competition it's like whoa 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 let's just appreciate the dram here yeah and I think what do you think I am Irish 
<laughs> I see it. Do you know what? The, the, the portrayal of <laughs> you got to get some comments now if there's anybody else. I know, I know. <laughs> the, the portrayal of uh, scotch drinking or whiskey drinking in general in the movies is a lot to answer for because mm -hmm. like you know it's like the cowboy coming up and going scotch and it gets slammed on the thing and it's you know down the counter <sighs> leave the bar the kind of thing and it's like really no did you even smell that first? Yeah, I mean, I have this argument with uh, my fiance all the time because she has a tendency to have a big gulp and just scoop it down. Loves whiskey. Um, I'm not quite sure that she has the, the same kind of smell buds and taste buds that I have. Um, but I, I often try and get her to like smell it and tell me what she smells. And I think she gets a little bit frustrated by it because she kind of wants to, it's more about the taste for her, whereas like you were saying earlier, Mike, for me, the real joy in whiskey is the is the smell. It's that it, I can just be there for 10, 20, 30 minutes just smelling it. I, I don't need to even take a sip. I could just lose myself in that smell. That's what I miss, actually, just now about going back to the the kind of cheaper stuff. Um, is, is I, I, have, I have the opposite. Um, I wouldn't say problem. It's actually quite a blessing, is it? My wife is really cut back. She, she works at Glengiwi um, as a tour guide and Previous to that, worked at Glendronic. She helps us out in the shop, so works in the shop now. Um, she's got a great nose on her, but she doesn't drink. And she 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 enjoys a dram, but she won't drink it um, like you or me would drink it. So when I'm struggling for a taste or a nose, I'll pass it on to her. She'll have a quick. And she goes, "Oh yeah, that's poached pears or apples." Or, or she'll, she'll give me it, and that's like, that's exactly what it is. Um, great, write it down while I yeah. remember it. Uh, but she won't drink it as well, which is better for me because there's more drink of whiskey for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, Sarah's, Sarah's amazing at that. Sarah will pick out stuff uh, that I might be struggling for and just be like, that's such and such. And I'll be like, all right. Or it, it smells like this kind of flower. And I don't really know that many flowers. <laughs> you know? I'm more of a vegetable kind of growing guy. But um, there's, there's, you know, a, there's, a, there's a kind of, so a slightly kind of sexist reason behind it, but there's also a physical reason. And Stuart the Allison's come in and said his girlfriend's got a much better nose. Um, and I guess traditionally there's two reasons. One one is that um, the, the, the physical genetics, the makeup of, <laughs> of, of, of the olfactory part is that women have actually got better or more attuned receptors than than men, typically, not always, Certainly. but typically in, in general, that's that's physically um, accurate. Um, but not only that, I guess, <clears throat> over the years and, and traditionally in the past, a lot of uh, women have been more attuned to, to things like cooking, uh, whereas men haven't. I mean, men are more often to be found in the kitchen these days, but traditionally that was never the case. So I think there's always that bit where you've got more exposure to different smells, so you're able to name what that is. But as, as a guy, sometimes you, you, know, you kind of know what it is, but you can't put a name to it. Mm. And I think so. I think I think the female brain is much more educated to identify. I'm, identify what I'm, I'm going to I'm going to pop in like a really sexist comment here, but <clears throat> it's it's only because like I'm I'm quite passionate about cooking as well. Is that maybe like quite a lot of the smells that you get are from cooking, and archetypally that has been yeah. a, a job for yeah. like in my family anyway. Like my yeah. mum was more of the the person that did the cooking, and my dad yeah. wasn't. Um, but. Yeah. In my I, I household, guess, it's different. I do the cooking yeah, for the most it, part. And, I certainly yeah. think as well. You know, th this is three guys talking. Women. This is we are very. Looking down the comments, every every guy's saying the same. Every guy's in the same. My wife, my girlfriend, whatever's got much better. That's exactly what I'm going to say. Is this is yeah yeah. I'm going to say it's backed up by fact, but it's it is the reasons behind it. We would look at now as probably being a very sexist thing to say by saying oh. It's because the women's are, the women are in the kitchen. It's, no, but it's, it's, it's because it's, of that. Experiences, it's, all right. It's, it's experiencing yeah, it's those smells. It's, you can't, you can't up, deny it. And, and not just in the kitchen, well, but probably in the garden. Um, with different flowers and different aromas and things like that as yeah. well. But physically, there are um, women have more um, receptors in their olfactory area than men have. Yeah. T generally speaking, I said not always. I mean, not everybody's the same. But typically speaking, they do have a genetic uh, advantage yeah. in terms yeah. of picking up smells. Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess, now, well, when, when we talk about it in tastings, um, I, I kind of we, we, we get that look, especially if there's women in the group, they're like, Oh, it's almost daunting. It's like, Oh, the challenge is on now, I have to be better. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's like I, I compare it to, to me choosing a color for painting a wall, um, compared to the wife, and it'll be red, yellow, blue, whereas she'll come out with 
Tiffany Blue, Mauve, Sky, yeah. you know, Big all these shows, like, and, and, and that's how I kind of compare Tasty Notes to to it. It's it's far more fine tuned. I'll, far I'll more be descriptive. Sweet. She'll be yeah. fruity sweet and, and that kind of thing. So it's yeah, it's it's a compliment to you to the women who are watching. It's an absolute compliment to you. <laughs> no, no, typically, typically, typically speaking, a woman a woman's mind is much more descriptive than a male's. I mean, you know, males are pretty simple in the way they describe things, whereas women are much more able to to be much more descriptive. You know, yeah, I think that's yeah. Yeah. She, she comes up with some very descriptive names for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've heard a few of them, mate. <laughs> I was, just, I was just looking through the comments there, and I can see that uh, Stuart says that his girlfriend has much better, uh, a n much better nose than him. Um, so that's, I think that's Whiskey Whims, Mr. Stuart Allison. Okay. Um, Whiskey Whims, another YouTube channel. Go over and check him out. Uh, um, but now <laughs> I know, now I know where he gets all his amazing tasting notes from. So it's not him at all. So I'm now not going to congratulate Stuart. Like, hmm, great, yeah. great tasting note. I'm, I'm looking forward to finding that out. I'm going to just thank his wife. <laughs> I, I like Ed's comment there. My wife yeah. is a dreadful thing to tell. You can go for a bath without, without a bath for days. Brilliant. Yeah, oh, dear. So, so what's next for the Whiskey Trials, Neil? What's your targets? What's your goal for 2021? Do you know what? I think uh, I'm at this point where I, I don't know why I started it, really. Um, I had no goal in mind apart from... I was thinking about this uh, when I was driving back up uh, from my work. I was at the office today, one of the few times. It was amazing being back in the office. Like, wow, I can actually go out the house. But as I was driving back up, I thought, why did I start the whiskey trials? Uh, what was my reasoning? What was my purpose? What were my goals? And I think... My advice to other people that would want to start something like I've started would be to, you know, it, it is nice to have a goal. It is nice to have a purpose. You don't necessarily need to have one, though. I didn't. And, um, you know, it's not... Uh, I, I think you can have more focus if you do. But like I said, I've experimented with, like, different video styles, different ways of doing stuff, uh, and kind of finding where I'm at and what I what I really kind of want to do and what I'm passionate about. Um so I think, you, you know, taking that into account where I see the whiskey trials heading in the future, it's much more that kind of live, if I'm doing reviews, I prefer that kind of live streaming thing that I do, you know, so I, I'll, I'll do the, I'll do this whole kind of thing and I'll, you know, I can, I can do the, I can do the transitions and I, I don't need to edit the video because when I first started out, I think that was, that was probably my main goal was, I wanted to learn how to edit videos and, and do all that kind of stuff. And now I've learned a, a good bit of it. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty decent. And I got bored of just editing the same kind of review style video all the time. So this kind of live streaming style where I don't, I can just go blah, 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 uncut and just, you know, use my little stream deck here and, and do the transitions and do some cool stuff. Um, it's the nose. Let's do the nose people, you know? So it, I feel that's, that's where I'm going to do the reviews. Uh, that's that's my review style from now on, um, and and any samples that get sent to me, I'll, I'll do that kind of style. I think I kind of want to focus more on things like a story in a glass. Uh, I want to be more creative. If I do a video, I want it to be something that's uh, more of an event or something that's funny. Uh, I'd, I, I've got so many ideas written down in my notebook for videos, and I, I just want to get to the stage where, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm putting out these reviews still that are interesting, don't need much or any editing at all, but then focusing in on something uh, that that's like a funny idea or a good idea or a good talking point. Those kind of whiskey talks, maybe some whiskey walks. And I, I, like, I, like, I like trying to do something funny, trying to stir up some emotions, being a bit controversial. Like I said, I like the dram ah. So it's it's you know you're, I think uh, I think that's where it, it is kind of heaven. Your Glenn Divot uh, video created a wee bit of a storm. Oh, the Glenn Divot. See, let's just talk about the Glenn Divot for a while. I was <laughs> I was so excited about Glenn Divot because when you know I just made that one mistake of putting their footage into it. 
mm-hmm. and and then it was like a copyright infringement because it was taken off. Like I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I did that. I did that video, and I just started posting it in a few places on Facebook, and you know, and it just went from like zero to like five hundred to then a thousand. It was up at fifteen hundred. Then it was up at two thousand, and then I probably made the mistake of I think I might have added Glenn Livett and just yeah. like made them aware of the video. So whoever's in charge of their marketing department went, oh. Uh, he made a mistake there, and we can get that taken down. So yeah, they got it taken down, and then I had to re-film a section of it. Um, but yeah, the Glen, I, I, I like I like stuff like that. You know, it's it, and it's not me necessarily being nasty. It's just an idea in my head. It's like you know, I don't hate Glenn Livet. If you look, you can't see behind me, but behind the green screen. There is many, many empty bottles of Glen Livet. I have drunk <laughs> a lot of Glen Livet. All right, I'm not necessarily a massive Glen Livet fan. I, I like the older stuff rather than the new stuff. But you know, I'm, I'm not against them. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, there's no <laughs> vendetta or anything like that. It's just. It's just something funny that I thought. But it was hilarious. I mean, the the, the whole um, the whole capsules. It was the capsules, you know. Um, yeah. That they came out with these the cocktail, cocktail capsules. capsules. Yeah, and they, they looked just like uh, the washing tabs that you put in your. Yeah, yeah. That was for a festival, um, wasn't it? It took out for. A, a I, can't, I can't remember, but the advert just seemed yeah. so daft, and um, Neil and I spoke thing. about it. And then you, the, this video came up, and uh, the, the whole idea was that there was a whiskey capsule that you threw into your washing machine so that you could stink <laughs> like whiskey. You know, it was like, <laughs> do, do you want that just out of the pub smell? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I like to take the piss out of marketing departments. I think because uh, you know I've been involved in marketing the past few years, and um, you you just see stuff that's like. Uh, Cliche you know, or... Corporate corporate um, marketing is just that. You can see that it's just fake and, and not real. And this gets back to the sort of tribe thing that I'm talking about. Like consumers now want to get away from advertising. They want to get away from marketing, which is the old school way of doing things. It's like, hey, here's a whiskey. You should buy this whiskey. It's great. Buy this whiskey. Mm, great whiskey. <laughs> Nobody wants that anymore. People want that tribe. People want this. This is not big. This is the, I don't know, I, I don't even know if it's like the first, tell me about our bag, Mike, is this the original Isla? You know, give me the whole thing. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's the peak. I mean, it's, I think it's, people it's, want honesty. They, they want details. Yeah. They want, and, and it's not just a whiskey thing. I think this is the consumer nowadays. This is craft beer. This is craft gin. This is yep. cars. People want to know where it comes from, who makes yep. it, why they should buy it. Not, yep. this is selected from the, the finest Barrels hand picked in Hereth. You go by that, every bloody distillery in the world picks the finest. They can't all have the finest, surely. No, and it's it's but, a modern it's it's a yeah. it's a modern take on stuff as well. We've we're moving away from like uh, the factory, and mm-hmm. and and we're becoming it's it's more it's less about factory produced and it's more about passionately produced. Yeah. That's what we want, right? Yeah. And I think that's that's filtering down, not just in whiskey, but in in, in everything. Like you know, uh, I, I bought a I bought a digital radio recently, and the reason I bought it was because of their brand story, their message. It was right there on their on the Amazon uh, thing, and I was just like, I'm going to buy this radio. And it wasn't because it was like maybe the best radio, or it was it, it was certainly cheap, but their brand message spoke to me, and I was like. That's what I'm going to buy, and I think yeah. that is becoming more and more yeah. of the norm for a consumer. It we're not be a little bit extra for that, not because it's yeah, more, you know, it's because they trust in it due to that process. Somebody's we're not, it is, Sam's we're, not, pop, pop we're not so there. blind anymore, are we? We're yeah. not so blind. It's yeah. not just like okay, I'm just going no, to buy a Sony TV now. You, you can't bullshit people because you know what one thing you, you said about you you come into a shop like ours because you expect us to know, um, and there, there are things yeah. we don't know. Um, and I think it's important for us uh, in any whiskey shop to say, I don't know. You know, I don't know that. I'll try and find out. Um, I haven't tried this whiskey before. I could tell you about something similar to it, whatever that I do. Like, or I could say, Russell's, you know, so somebody comes in and asks for a Glencadam. I'm relatively new to Glencadam. I know it's one of Russell's favorites. I say, Russell, go and speak to this lad about Glencadam. Or, or somebody comes in and says, oh, I tried a, something. I'll be right in there saying, tell me about it. I haven't tried it before. What do you think? So at least I can then save up in my bank and say, well, we actually had a customer in last week talking about this jam. This is what he thought or she thought. Uh, mm. And it's important because people will see right through 
if you try and lie to them. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and it, does it does that actually affect your buying, Mike? In terms of the shop, I mean, do you do you stock stuff that you're more passionate about, or? Um, we, we try and buy. You know, we 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 experiment with new. We're we're doing a lot of new independent bottlers just now. We we've taken in the Uncharted guys. Uh, we've just got an order of James Ed, Chapter Seven, kind of under the radar. We we but we have the Morrison's. Um, we we have Douglas Lang. We have these kind of guys that we know, but people trust and com are confident with. Mm -hmm. um, I like to give new guys a chance. Um, we, we ask for samples. There's like any chance we can try them first so we know what we're talking about. I, I think it's important, especially in whiskey, to to have it, at least a, a bit of knowledge about a couple of the drums. Not all the drums, but say, you know, the, these guys are good. Um, and, and yeah, on the day, we might miss a sale because we didn't know about that particular whiskey. But instead of blagging it saying oh this is the best whiskey in the world buy it you're gonna to have to snap up that customer goes home opens it tries it what a lot of crap that is nothing like mm. or googles or, or you know because people will google they'll go on their phone they'll find out information they say that guy's just told me a load of crap you know off the top of his head they, they won't come back me i do it in the shop i go into whiskey shops and i'm googling in the shop yeah like, yeah. So I'm, one, I'm doing a price check to see how much more expensive it is in the shop. And do you know what? I'm happy that it is more expensive. I get that you guys have got like uh, more bills and stuff to pay. And actually, uh, one of the things that I love about whiskey shops is that you go there for the chat, for the experience, mm -hmm. for that expertise. And that's what I want. And that's what I'm willing to pay more for when yeah. I go to the shop. So that's why it's important for you guys and the pressure's on to try these whiskeys, right? Because like if I come in and say, I'm interested in Lady of the Glen and you haven't tried any of it, I'm gonna see through that. You know, you can't you know necessarily yeah. you keep lie yeah, and get away with it. But it, it does make a difference, O'Neill. I think if 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 it's a whiskey that uh, Mike or I absolutely adore and we can't see past it, it will definitely be a clincher sale because we can't help but say what we what we love yeah. about it, um, and yeah. uh, we almost we almost kind of back off a little bit because if it were like a, I'm not saying that you might enjoy it, but you know, my, my, you know, I know I love this. I buy this all the time, and people say, "Well, I'll just get that," and you're like, "Oh my god, I hope they like it." Yeah. And they'll come back and they'll say, "God Almighty, that was amazing! What's like it?" Because I want to try something else, and then you've got somebody who comes in and just takes. I've got a guy who comes in all the time and just says, "I want a Peter Fisky." Yeah. That's all he says to me, and I've got to give him something different. Uh, he said, yeah. "No, no, you give me that last thing. All right, okay, take this one." Yep, and he just yeah. takes it. And then he goes back and says, "That was brilliant," because he now trusts everything I say about drums that I think are good. We've got the lad who comes in every Saturday. And he, I think he's tried every forty pound whiskey we've got in the shop. <laughs> and he, <laughs> <laughs> so, and he, so that's why he's so vague, right? He's like, yeah. I, "I want a peated whiskey." <laughs> what have you got? <laughs> yeah. Right. So. But yeah, I mean that—that that is. It's certainly one of our. Our, our mantra as a shop is to be honest and if we don't know it don't lie about it because they'll be on their phone they'll say you've you've actually told me that this distillery was opened in well, 1797 it was 2016 <laughs> yeah. that happened tonight there was a there was a guy looking for something a wee bit unusual for one of his friends he wanted it slightly local and, we, and you know we the glendronic situation in the shops now we don't have any for the first time in a long time it's coming um glengarry is okay in my mind i'm not a glengarry fan and um, but there was a car more Glen Geary, um, mm -hmm. finishing a sherry butt, and I thought, you know what, I think that's probably going to be pretty good in your price range. And he said, Do you, have you tasted it? I said, no, I haven't. But I, I think I think that would be a good dram because I've tried other independent bottlers. And you could see him being, I think, I'm not so sure because you've not tried it. So I thought, Mike, have you tried it? And he said, no, I've not tried it either. So we couldn't we couldn't even persuade mm -hmm. him because neither one of us had tried it, even though I would I would take a punt on it. But I wasn't willing to push that sale to that guy because yeah. I'm thinking, yeah. I, I really, I don't want to push it because I don't know. We've spoken about the Glen Alicky 15. I know that's amazing. I think your friend will like it. So yeah. he's like, yeah, yeah, tough, let's go. It's tough when you don't get enough stock to like open a bottle and say, okay, let's try it. The, kind of um, I mean, the, the problem we have now is somebody like, uh, and I'm not going to pick on Morrison's because they've, they've just gone through a re revamp and everyone's got the challenge of COVID. Um, it, you know, where we haven't been getting samples or we haven't been getting, but someone like Morrison or formerly Morrison McKay, when it was Morrison McKay, we got a lot, you know, sample stock so we could try it or um graham would come in with his backpack full of goodies and you could try it and uh, make your order off the back of what you tasted um unfortunately now it's it's so sought after uh, that we just say I'll, I'll take a case of it and it's almost to the point where they don't have to push it with letting us taste it um when it, we know it'll sell 
here. That it's a tricky situation because it sells so well that it's gone by the time we get a chance to sell <laughs> to, to try or buy a bottle for ourselves. We don't want to be seen to be buying bottles off ourselves, de depriving customers of it. Yeah. So, you know, it is tricky um, for these indies. There are other ones who, who will always give you a sample of it. Uh, it, was, it was one of the things I was thinking of coming up the road as well was uh, in terms of running a shop. You know, it, for me, if I was running a shop, it would be like, I, I kind of want to be like, do you know what? I don't really enjoy Jura. I don't want to stock it. I can't be passionate about it. I can't sell it. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe Glenn Fiddick as well would be one that I'd be like, do you know what? I don't want to stock it. It's like... But that's a tricky one because people will come into the shop looking for that and they'll want it. And I know I don't like it. And I'm, I'm handing a bottle over because they say, have you got such and such? Mm. And I'll be like, yeah, I've got it. Yeah, can, can I get that? And you're like, fine. But in your head, you're thinking... Why on earth are you buying that? I can't stand it. But that's not my that's not my choice. That's not, uh, yeah, that's, I, I, that's what they I get, want. I get that it's not, yeah. it's not it's not your call and it's it's uh, you know I think the amount of times that we've we've done that and, and I I am looking to, to progress into more indie bo indie bottlers and, and stuff like that, more unusual whiskies. Uh, and I think we can make a, 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 a Janice who works in the shop um, is it is not the complete opposite, but she thinks, you know, she knows the customer. She's the, the kind of shop floor queen. She, she knows people who come in and where everything is. And, you know, when I sell out of Old Pulteney or Highland Park 12, Anik, place, you know, drinks that people will get cheaper at supermarkets. And mm -hmm. I think, right, I'm not going to bring that in again because it's mm -hmm. taken up a space of something that we can. Yeah, totally. And, and, you know, straight after people are coming in and asking for it. Have you got Highland Park? You know, 12 yeah, 12 year old. Is it? Yeah, but, then, but, but you can then steer them away from it, right? You can say, okay, uh, what is no, it about no, Helen Park really. 12 that you like? Not really, not really. No, people come in for I, an hour, people come in for an hour, hour 10, you don't have it, and you say, you say, well, I've got this from me, Glenn Allen. Yeah. No, I was looking for that hour 10. Yeah. It's like, I've got to have that. Right, um, but the, 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 for me, right, it, it, it's uh, in, in terms of like marketing, in terms of like business development, it's like finding your niche, right? Who are you trying to sell to? Are you I, I, are you trying to sell to the supermarket buyers? No, right? You're trying to sell yeah. to people like I, myself, I, I, aficionados, I, people I, are passionate. We're, in, we're, 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 in a, we're in a big town, so we do get people yeah. who have come into us because they can't be bothered going to Tesco. They're happy to pay four or five pound more for an annex. Yeah, so they might get uh, a, cost think, for, a, a big know. part of our okay. custom um, be before COVID because a lot of it went online and we. We sold a lot more of the niche stuff because people were specifically searching for it online. Um, but people coming into the store, a lot, a, a high, high percentage of it um, is people buying for a gift, a Father's Day, a birthday, an anniversary, or something like that. So if they come in saying, oh, my granddad likes Highland Park, and we show them the A.D. Rattray, Cask Orkney 18, for example, this mm -hmm. is a, it's a Highland Park and all but name. This is great stuff. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't say Highland Park, but he, you know, it's we've got that big base of clientele as well who won't commit if it doesn't say Highland Park or McAllen or something on the bottle. Yeah. No matter how good we think an indie bottling is, if it doesn't say that on the shelf on the on the bottle, it's like mm, no. So we we have got that kind of that 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 group that we care for, and they are far more regular than than I would have thought coming into specialist whiskey shop. Yeah, it's a it's a good point, and it's well made, and the I mean. I just, I think <laughs> and it's different because I've never really done retail. So like my view is just like niche, 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 find your niche and you'll make your money, right? And you'll make a name. So like for me, like if Inverurie Whiskey Shop was just about passionate whiskey, it's just, this is what you get when you come in. Like we don't sell shit. You know, if you want to go, the, if you want to get the supermarket stuff, not that I'm saying all supermarket stuff is shit. I'm just saying, <laughs> if you want, if you want the expertise, if you want something special, um, you know, if you want the supermarket stuff, go to the supermarket, right? You, you you're not going to get the chat here. You're just going to have to pay five pound extra for it, and it's taking up shelf space. For me, rather, when I come into every whiskey shop, I want you guys to sell me something amazing something i've never seen we also we also get we also get people into the shop who sorry i'm trying to brush my hair we also get people come into the shop who are absolute newbies to whiskey who will will start off with an anic 12 and then they'll come back in and then they'll go into something a bit stronger and then we'll eventually get them on to independent buffers that's and fine but there's loads of stuff that's not in the supermarket that you can start people off on you know uh, yeah. and, and 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 i i don't i'm not saying like I don't know. Is there is there stuff that you don't stock because you don't like it? 
Is it just like um, we're not going to stock that because we don't like it? Well, we've got a different taste, but yeah, the, yeah. there's been stuff we haven't brought back in because it hasn't been successful. Yeah, um, yeah. I wouldn't say because we don't like it. Um, Ultimately, like there's no such thing as a bad. There, there really is no such thing as a bad drama. Yeah. There is. And, um, there's, there's definitely <laughs> a bad drama. <drumstick. laughs> <laughs> you've, you've, you've never tried Hague Club, Russell. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, fair enough. God, have we still got that bottle? No, no. Yeah, our last two bottles of it, and we had it in the shop since we opened. Our last two bottles got got stolen. Um, Excellent. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know what? I didn't even I didn't even phone the Bobby. I was like, hey, please, please, please <laughs> thanks, thanks, guys. <laughs> I don't want if see if they catch them and bring it back. I'd be like, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> I think I think you arranged the break in. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 that is the thing though right it, it, like taste is absolutely subjective so if somebody comes to me and they're like Glenfiddich 12 is the most amazing whiskey I've ever had part of me is like you've not tried a lot of whiskey uh, and the other part of me is like well fine you know if Glenfiddich 12 is the the one that stands out for you then you've just got different taste buds for me and, and that's you know fine what? see with Glenfiddich 12 see if you go back to it and have a drama of it it's there's a reason it's so popular worldwide. I, I think we 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 reached this got kind there of first and like well, there's a, bit a of bunch that. of marketing there's behind a bit it. Of that. But there's, there's, an, there's an audience. There's an audience for yeah. all of this. There's and an I think it's Scotland. It's so easy to get a hold of. It's so yeah. available that people just don't buy it. And see if you go back and and I was the same with the uh, the Glenalhe twelve year old. Not not this most recent batch. I had it way back when it first came out. Way, way, way back in four years ago, whatever it was, <laughs> and you try it, and you think it's great, but then they took out so many single casks, so many new stuff, and we try all these wonderful different stuff, and then you just go back to it, and just pour a dram of it, and you think, wow, what a good dram! You know, it's I, I I'm a big fan of Glenferry Twelve. I just think it's something that we get used to, and we we over o- overlook so many times because it's it's you know it's available everywhere. You're like. Actually, yeah. you know, you go to a bar and you see a Glyphic 12 and you think, I can get that anytime. But you never yeah. actually have it. There's there's also a perception of people coming in. This, this is one of the things, and and you might find this really challenging, Neil. Um, and Mike will remember this one situation in particular, and he certainly will not, and he will, I don't even remember names, so it won't matter. Um, but a customer came into the shop looking for a uh, looking for a great bottle of whiskey uh, to to give to somebody. as a Because it was the, I think their son had a... Um, Got some help from this elderly couple who are absolutely huge. Either massive into whiskey, um, so it needs to be something really, really good. I'm thinking, okay, great, yeah. So what's your budget? Um, about thirty pounds. I mean, something really good. And I'm thinking straight away. I'm thinking, shit, okay, what, what are we getting for thirty pounds? I mean, you know, you're looking at all the fantastic stuff we've got. Um, I managed to sell the lady something she thought was well. It was. It was still a good whiskey, but that, I thought, oh my god, you know, you've come in here looking for the best. What you think is going to be the best whiskey for thirty quid? So you've got yeah, people with an, absolutely it, no idea. But you, that's your job, though, right? That's yeah, yeah, your job absolutely. to provide yeah. the best whiskey yeah. for 30 quid. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that's not necessarily a supermarket stuff, but there's other stuff out there, right? There's so many blends that really compete and absolutely oh, blow no. away no, no, the no, supermarket no, 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 stuff no, no. for complexity. It's got to be a, no. it's gotta be a single yeah. malt. It's got to be yeah. a single malt. Well, you, you, if, if I said this, oh, this is a lovely blend. Uh, no, 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 it's I not know. a single malt. I mean, they know whiskey. They know whiskey. They're not going to, you know. Oh, they know whiskey. Yeah, that's why you're spending 30 quid. Right well, yeah, that's, yeah. So, but I mean, you've got to cater for everybody. And Inverurie is a big town. It's not like it's a niche. It's not no. like it's in Duft- Dufton where it's, it's not, just whiskey town. That's not what you do. That's not what niching is about. You don't have to cater for everybody. I'm just thinking. We're not, we're not niching. I, 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 I get the retail thing, right? I get that you've got to cater for everyone. I'm, I'm, I'm playing I, devil's just, advocate. Just this, we've, got, we've got gin. We've got vodka. We've got yeah, tequila. I know. We've got wine. Thing, right? We've got Imagine beer. Imagine Inveruri Whiskey Shop making its mark, right? <laughs> do, you, do you know what Inveruri Whiskey Shop Brandy, could be? It cognac. could be the tribe. It could be the tribe for whiskey where we don't sell no shit. It's like Jura <laughs> tastes like soap, and we think it tastes like soap. Uh, you might love it, but we don't give a shit. It's gone. You need, you need to change the name of the shop, Mike, to the Inverurie No Shit Shop. <laughs> Although saying that, Jura, man, oh man, I had uh, an old particular of Jura. It was absolutely one of the best whiskies I had last year. 
It was fantastic. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some independent bottlers of Judah that are out of this world. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, the uh, Lady de Glen had, was it a 24-year-old, yeah. 22-year-old? Yeah. was incredible. Yeah, stunning. Yeah. Uh, so, I think yeah. mine was mine was only like a 10-year-old a or 11-year-old. It was quite young. But it was, the guy gave me it in the shop, and you could tell he was he was in the whiskey no. And it, maybe from my chat, he thought that I was as well. So he gave me this to test me, and he's like, what do you think it is? And I was like, I don't know. It's nice. It's this. It's that. And I'm giving off a couple of names. He's like, nope, nope, nope. It's a Jura. And I was like, what? He's like, <laughs> I know! <laughs> it's proper, like, ha -ha, gotcha. it's a Jura, yeah. you know, because everybody yeah. loves to take the piss out of Jura a little bit, but, it, you know, they, they can do some really great stuff. And, and, and I think this is this is part of my reason why I, I'd be like encouraging you to uh, not necessarily discount them, but like focus on people that are doing the right thing. Uh, because, you know, we can only, we can only govern the market by, by what we buy with our pocket. Right. So if, if people continue to buy Jura and they don't know any better, you know, that's that's up to like people like me, YouTubers, content marketers, people like you that work in shops to educate people, let let people taste different stuff, get them on to different things, continue that journey. I think a lot of people stop at the supermarket and they don't go past that. Um, so it, it, it'd be really great to see a shop really embrace that and just be like, this is us. This is what we believe in. This is this is how we want to build our tribe of aficionados. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you're probably doing that anyway, because... Uh, yeah, it's sort of an interesting way of looking at it. Um, I, I think if we only stocked whiskey that we really, really, really liked, we've got too big a shop for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, a handful of us in there, but make it out and be happy. We wouldn't be making any money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, um, right, guys, uh, we're going to have to wrap up, because... We, we, we've got another Ooh. session to go into, but uh, I, I definitely think there's legs in this, Neil, for, for another blather sometime soon. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, I'm going to pitch uh, this one for the second round. Uh, Duncan Matier is asking, what about grain whiskey? What's your thoughts? So so how about round two in a couple of weeks' time? Uh, we'll talk grain whiskey. Talk about grain, yeah. <laughs> quite like about grain, but yeah, okay. So, right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, it's been good fun. Um Quite, quite a fast hour. My God, that, that actually rocketed past. Um, so we've Thanks talked, for having me. Let, let's make it two hours next oh, time so we can fit all my uh, yeah. my, uh, my horrible chat in that, that <laughs> is divisive and like creates bipolar people. And yep. <laughs> well, good fun. And I look forward to seeing your, your updated uh, graphics and all, and all that jazz. But uh, yeah, th thanks, Neil. Um, well, we'll come on on. Hello! And, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone, um, jump. You know, if you haven't subscribed to the Whiskey Trials, go on to YouTube, subscribe to the channel, um, find out what it's all about. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks very much, Neil. Russell, we'll see you soon. And yeah. uh, guys, uh, great to have you along again. Uh, good fun. Great to see all the comments. A very interactive uh, yep. chat tonight. Lots of comments coming in, which is great. Great Amazing. to see some new guys, some regulars. Um, Whiskey Lover Society, thank you very much for, for being our YouTube connection tonight. <laughs> awesome. Oh, and uh, uh, check out the everywhereywhiskeyshop.com for all the latest deals. And uh, <laughs> make sure and phone Russell directly for all your Glenallachie 30 inquiries. <laughs> yes, please, please. I haven't had, I haven't had enough today at all. <laughs> He's just saying that because he knows he's off for the weekend and Janice will get it all tomorrow. <laughs> Slanger, guys. All right, guys. Yeah. Cheers. Take Cheers, care. everybody. Slanger. 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 Cheers.